The first of these concepts I want to talk about is short feedback loops. When you think about what we just talked about with waterfall, a customer may not see something for many months. This is a year-long project. It may be eight, nine months before they actually start seeing the product. And if there's any changes we have to make, that's too late. There's no time to go back and really do that and stay on time and on budget. So Agile is about getting that information to the customer very quickly and finding out that something's wrong in a short amount of time so that we didn't waste a lot of time and we can readjust. It's also for short feedback loops within the team, the team being able to just hand something over from development to the tester, find out something's broken, get it back, getting that back to the business so they can see if there's anything wrong with that, and getting any information back to us as soon as we can. So we might think big, but we're going to work small and fail fast and learn quickly. The next concept is just-in-time requirements and design. Often software development is compared to building a house. And software development is nothing like building a house. Unless you have a compiler out there that I can put all the information about a house and boom, build me a house, it is nothing like that. We have the ability to make change to requirements and software as we go along. So we do not need huge comprehensive blueprints of how we're going to design it. Often you'll see development works best from a list. We do this naturally. I come in in the morning, I say, I need to do this, I need to do this next, I need to do this next. We naturally work from lists. So working from lists as far as requirements, working from lists as far as design is also a good way. We're not saying you don't do requirements and design. We're just going to do it at the last responsible moment. And we'll talk more about that later. The next concept I'd like to cover is delivering incremental value. We obviously can't build the entire product, but we'll build small pieces of it as we go. So while we're working in these short feedback loops, we want to deliver something of value to the customer, for the company, at the end of each one of those increments. Something that we could display to a stakeholder, maybe put into an alpha program or a beta program, and then when we have enough functionality, we might release it to the market in general. Another concept that works with this is called release-ready deliverables. Now you might be thinking, well, that's pretty self-explanatory. We want our deliverables to be release-ready. But I'm talking about at the end of each one of those short feedback loops, we're going to put out a product increment, so it has to have all of these things, code complete, integrated, documented, deployable, tested, so that I can actually take that product increment and deliver it to the client if I want to. Sustainable pace is another concept with most Agile frameworks out there. It's the idea of being able to deliver the same amount of work over a short feedback loop over and over again at a pace you could keep up indefinitely. We've often all been on projects that were long and drawn out in what we call death marches. These death marches usually come from a long drawn out plan with a lot of fanfare at the beginning. It dies down a little bit. Then over time we start working a little bit and realize we have a date coming up, a deadline we have to meet. So we work nights and weekends to meet this sometimes ambiguous deadline. We get it out, maybe a little late, maybe on time find some problems and we go back to 80 hour weeks and then it dies down a little bit and we go back to our normal work pace and then maybe the next project we have to do it again. This up and down is not something you can keep up forever. It's not a sustainable pace. You'll burn your people out very easily with this. It's also not very predictable because each one of those, usually depending on a context or a hero, somebody who comes in and saves the day and you can't always depend on that each time you're going to do something. So you want to keep up a pace that everybody is comfortable with, that has a good work-life balance, and also you can keep up forever. There's also a concept of lean management hierarchy, meaning we want a few people to be able to make decisions so that we can stop and turn on a dime. I worked for a large company once, 26,000 people worldwide, and they wanted to give me a bonus. They were going to give me some stock options. So they set the strike price, but it had to be approved by 20 people up the line and VPs and so-and-sos. And before the time it actually got to me, the strike price was actually more than the actual stock. So when I got my bonus, I actually owed them money. And that didn't make any sense. And that often happens in companies with these large hierarchies, where decision-making has to go through so many steps before we can make any type of change. So Agile wants to prescribe a lean management hierarchy, smaller number of people in those key roles. They may still have people who help them gather information and make these decisions, but they're the ones making the decisions. The downside of that might be that with 20 people making a decision, one person making the wrong decision, 
might be okay. With three people making decisions, one person who's making bad decisions can have a bigger effect. So you want to make sure we populate those roles with people who are very well suited and informed and empowered to make those decisions. Agile is also all about self-organizing teams, where the team itself is actually in the best position to make decisions on how to move forward. Often in a command control type environment, you have managers who might be farther away from the day-to-day -day going on of the team, making decisions, making assignments, deciding what to use, and sometimes those are ill-informed because they're not there with the team. So the team is a group of people you hired because of their abilities, and you should trust them to do this, and you should give them the ability to make those decisions. And you'll find that empowering these teams often make them perform better. Often they come up with new and innovative ideas that you wouldn't have thought of yourself. So self-organizing teams, managing themselves, making their own decisions. So along with self-managing teams, you have to have a good deal of trust, courage, and transparency. Some balance between management and all the stakeholders and the people actually doing the work. We need the trust that our managers are making good decisions and that the information we're being given about the market is viable. If management trusts their teams and the team has the courage to tell management bad news, then that's a very transparent process. And you don't have to have as much command and control over those teams because you can see into their process at any time. Also, if we're letting the team know about our vision and where we're wanting to go in the market and what we're trying to do and what we think we're going to get out of it, they're going to have transparency into the business. And that will create more of a trusting relationship. And people will have the courage to speak up when they need to. The concept of continuous delivery is imperative if you're going to be developing in short feedback loops. This is the idea that any time I build something, I can take it from building it to deploying it as fast as possible. This often comes in the form of what we call continuous integration. As soon as I check in some code, it goes to the server, it's built with everybody else's code, it's passing tests, it's then deployed to an environment that the QA can test on it, it's through the same deployment options that we're going to push into production so that I know that that build and that deployment works before I even get to production. Having this ability to turn on a dime technically is just as important as being able to turn on a dime with management and change in business requirements. We also need to have the concept of embracing change. Customers often think they know what they want, but change their minds just because when they see something, it's not exactly what they imagined. Once they get their hands on something, a concept they had in their mind doesn't pan out. Technology changes markets change, and we need to be able to embrace that change. Often in large projects, in waterfall methodologies, they try to manage change. That's different than embracing it. Embracing it is something that changes is an opportunity versus something that I have to control and measure and quantify. You don't want to change everything willy-nilly, but you want to be able to embrace change, see what's going to be affected by making that change, and make a good, solid decision based on value on whether you want to make that change and move forward. And lastly, my favorite concept is inspect and adapt. I've worked at clients before where we had large methodologies with many roles and many process and tools around them. And at the end of one of our first projects with these large processes and tools, it didn't go so well. And we had a lessons learned, and everybody kind of went around and said what they didn't like about this process. And we all said, great. And the next project, we did the exact same thing all over again. And that's the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Or in Agile, most of these frameworks are very thin. They're skeletons. You're supposed to fill it in with what makes sense for you. And if that doesn't work, you're supposed to change it. It's like the old joke. Hey, it hurts when I do this. Well, don't do that. Do something else. Built into the process is the idea that the process is probably flawed. So you need to make changes and adjustments as you go along. Inspect and adapt. This not only happens in the process, it happens in the tools and the actual deliverables itself. So when we deliver something in a short cycle, we inspect it and make changes and adapt to it. If there's something wrong with the team, we inspect it and make changes and adapt to it. So you can continue to evolve your process as your team evolves. If you remember, we talked about Agile, it's those mixers, and I'm constantly moving those and constantly inspecting and adapting and changing as I go along because the world is full of change.